Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 12 of my C video tutorial. Today I'm going to cover binary file I.O. and a little bit on error handling in the C programming language. If you haven't seen the previous parts of this tutorial, I provide a link in the upper right-hand corner. I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to dabble a little bit in error handling, and to do that, I'm going to have to bring in this new library, and then we are going to just jump right into our little main program here and throw our return statement in there. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is just like before I'm going to create a file pointer. I'm just going to call it pfile. Then I'm going to create a buffer and the very first thing I'm going to do here is just demonstrate printing text out to a binary file and then reading it back in. Real simple and then in the next part I'm going to actually write an array out to a file and then read that data from the array back in. Then a new thing we're going to use is size t and what size t is, is it's a data type that's used to represent the size of an element in bytes. So for example, 10 characters would be equal to a size of 11. That's what would be stored. If you had 10 characters and then you wanted to store the number of bytes in this size t file, that's what it's going to hold, just the number of bytes. That's all it is. And I'm going to call it data in file. And then I'm going to create a long and call it file size and it's going to hold the size of our file and then I'm going to actually call f open just like before except in this situation I'm going to just call this names.bin and then since this is a binary file I'm going to put rb plus inside of that guy and then what I'm going to do is check if p file is equal to null and we're going to do a little bit of error checking I'm actually going to force an error to occur here. Since this is saying that we want to read data, that is actually going to throw an error if the file doesn't already exist. So I'm going to catch that error. I'm going to use this function right here called pError. And what it's going to do is it's going to print the string provided. So if I type in error occurred, like that, it's going to print that string. And then it's going to follow that with a standard error message. And then on top of that, if I say print f error code, it's also going to provide an error code in this value right here for this variable. And actually, actually all I'm going to do, is let's jump over here and execute this. We know this is going to cause an error. It's going to compile. Then it's going to say error occurred, no such file or directory. So that's exactly what it's going to do, and the error code for that is 2. Okay, so how exactly could we correct that error? Well, first let's say that we want to put a message out on the screen that file is going to be created instead since this error occurred. Go two new lines inside of there. And then since the file doesn't exist, we're going to say names.bin and put wb plus inside of there. That's going to say create the file for us. So here we're going to read from the file if it already exists. And if it doesn't, we're going to use WB down here and create it. Now, of course, there could be an error that occurs in this situation. And we could do the same sort of thing. Just copy this, paste that inside of there. Error occurred. Just have that all print out. And if an error occurs in this situation, let's say we just decide we want out of here. So we're just going to exit from our program. Otherwise, we know that we got our file created and we're going to be able to do some stuff with it. First thing I'm going to do is create a character array and I'm going to store my name inside of it. There we go. Now if I want to write binary data to a file, we're going to use a function called fwrite. So we're going to say fwrite and then inside of it we're going to pass a pointer to what we want to write to the file so that's going to be this and it's a pointer by default so we don't have to do anything we just put the variable name inside of there then we're going to put the size of each element in the array inside of here and to get that we just have to go size of name so this is in essence going to get the size of a character and if you were for example throwing a struct inside of here you could just put the struct or whatever you wanted to put inside of there but either way, we're just going to work with this for now. Then the third thing is going to be the number of elements that we plan on writing to our file. And to get that, we're going to use two size ofs. So we can just go like this, and let's just bounce down here. Size of, and then this is going to be name, which is going to be everything. And then we're going to divide that by size of an individual element. And then the final thing we're going to put inside of here is the actual file that we are going to be writing this data to. So that's fwrite and how fwrite works. 
Then the next thing I want to do is actually get the file size. And the first thing I'm going to do is call fseek so that I can move to the end of our file. And I can just do zero and then seek end. That's going to put our cursor at the end of the file. And then I'm going to be able to get my file size by going ftel p file. And there we go. So that's going to get the total file size. Then what I want to do is use another new function. I'm introducing a ton of functions in this tutorial. This is going to rewind us back to the beginning of our file. So it's easy to remember. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a buffer. And remember, we don't need this character data in here for C, but we need it for C++. So I'm just going to leave it there. And I'm going to use the memory allocation function. And I'm just going to set aside enough space to be able to hold our file. And to figure out how much that's going to be, I'm going to call character times file size, which is going to be the number of elements inside of it. Then I'm going to say if our buffer is equal to null, well, we know we don't have something in there, so we know some error occurred. And let's just save ourselves a little bit of time and just copy this right here. It's a nice thing about using this. You don't need to worry about printing out exactly what the error you think it is. It'll see compiler will actually tell you. So error occurred, and then let's change this exit to 2. So we know exactly what was going on there. And then to read this information from our file into our new buffer, we're going to use a function called fread. And I'm going to store this in data in file. If we come up here to data in file, there you can see that's going to say how many bytes of data there is. And we can just go fread. And then inside of this, we're going to provide the buffer we're going to be reading information into. And then the second attribute is going to be the number of bytes taken up by each element that's going to be read. And it's a character, so that's going to be one. And then the third thing is going to be the number of elements, which is going to be stored in file size. And then pfile is going to be the file that we're reading from. So that's how fread works. Now we want to just double check the data in file. If it is not equal to our file size, well, that means an error occurred. So let's just paste this error message in here again and change this error exit code to three. And otherwise, we know that we got our information. So we're going to say printf buffer. There that is. And then let's also say we want to throw in a new line here. And then the final two things we're going to do is call fclose on our file to free up that memory. And then I'm also going to call free on our buffer. And this is going to deallocate the memory block that was created for our buffer. And if we save that, whoops, and got a little bit of an error message, no big deal. Just so you don't know, because I don't know if I've ever actually said this. See, this actually tells you where the error occurred on line 24, and it says error pfile undeclared. So we'll just go to line 24 right here, and you can see right away that this needs to be an uppercase F. No big deal. And if we execute it, you can see that our original error message prints out because we had to create our file just like before. So it says error occurred, no such file or directory, error code two. So in this situation, the file is gonna be created. Everything's peachy keen. And then we're gonna call and we're gonna print my name out. So that's how to write a string to a file, a binary file, and then pull that information out and print it on the screen. Next, I'm gonna show you how to create and write an array to a binary file, and then read out any element inside of that file out the screen. Okay, so here we are once again, and I'm just gonna be changing a couple random things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate an array of random numbers and then randomly allow the user to pick one of them and then pull it from the file. So I'm gonna call this random nums dot bin I'm going to leave this for reading and I'm also going to use what we had before where the file wasn't created and if that occurred then we are going to create a new file so that'll be useful but for the most part everything else has been deleted so we're going to come down here now that we know our file has been opened or an error message has been triggered and it hasn't been opened and then we're going to create a random numbers array and it's going to have 20 random numbers inside of it then I'm going to create a for loop and it's going to generate all these random numbers so we we'll go random numbers i is equal to and I'm going to go rand 100 so it's going to throw random numbers in there from 0 to 100 and then I'm going to say number d is d backslash n just so we can print this information out to screen and see that it actually worked so I'm just going to print out i and then I'm going to print out random numbers 
I like that. So now that we have that information in our file, if I want to write this array into our file, I just call fwrite just like before, and I pass in the array that I want to write, and then what each one of those elements is going to be size-wise. So I just go size of int, and then how many? 20. And then where do I want to write it? To the file. That's all. And then let's say I want to get a random index number. I'm going to allow the user to actually dynamically pick the random number from the file that they want. Create an int, and I'm going to call this number at index, because it's going to be ints inside of here, of course. And then let's say I want to go printf, which random number do you want? And I'm going to allow them to actually tell me what index they want me to pull the random number from. And let's just use scanf because that's easy enough. And I'm just going to get this long, which of course I need to use random index number for that to write to that pointer. And then to actually put my cursor at the position in which they're asking for, I'm going to use fseek in binary mode, just like I've used it in the past. And the only real difference here is whenever you're using fseek in binary mode, you have to make sure that the offset is the number of the element that you're looking for times the possible size. So normally we would say random index number like this. You can try this for homework or practice or experimenting or whatever. Try just passing that. You're going to get errors. What you need to do is then also multiply that times the number or the size in bytes with what we're working with. So that's what we have to do there. And then since we're going to be looking for a specific index inside of that array, we have to put seek set. Well, then we use fread just like before to read the next int from our file after we move our cursor to the right position. And we're going to store this number at index like that. And then we have to pass along size of what we're going to be reading, which is going to be an int. And we're only going to be reading one number from the file. So we're going to put one and then the file that we're going to be working with, just like that. So after you do this enough, it just becomes easy. You just remember it. Okay, then if I want to print out something like, let's say, the random number at index, whatever they said they wanted is, and then whatever the file is, and a new line, and then we can say random index number and number at index, like that. And then we can have all this stuff all work just like before, but this time I'm not using a buffer, so I'm just randomly going in here and actually pulling information out of that, and I don't have a buffer here either. So Okay, so now that I have that set up, oh, there's another error. No big deal. Line 35. If you can't tell, I'm just doing this right out of my head, so print F. No big deal. Got that in there. Execute. Run it, and there you can see it's printing out all of the random numbers that we're going to be storing in our array. And if you look right here, at index 15 is the value of 3. And it's saying, which random number do you want? Well, I'm going to say that I want 15, because I know what that is. And the random number at index 15 is 3. So that is how you use binary I.O. to store different types of data inside of files. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.